You might not know your partner's true self. I mean, their secret heart. If you're dating somebody with avoidant attachment style, you probably won't know what they're really thinking until around the one year mark. Everything up to that point is based on temporary neurotransmitters, false feelings, and games that you might both be playing. I'm Adam Lane Smith, the attachment specialist. I've worked with couples for years, first as a licensed marriage and family therapist, now as a coach specializing in attachment theory. I am the attachment specialist, and today I'm here to show you how avoidant people actually live in their relationships. For those who are new to this channel, I've been working with avoidant individuals specifically for well over 10 years, again, as part of my therapy and coaching careers. I've heard their secrets, and I've helped them repair their ability to bond. And I've analyzed in depth the repeated patterns that I keep seeing again and again in every avoidant person that I work with. In this video today, I'm going to show you why an avoidant person's first year of any relationship is based on false connection, and why most relationships break up at one year, and what both of you can do if you want to build a strong, enduring relationship pattern together. I'm also going to give you a special offer for a resource that's going to build a great relationship with someone who's avoidantly attached and get you to that 50 year mark where you're both smiling, laughing together and sharing a wonderful life as a couple. If you want to reach that point, watch to the end of this video, you're going to have that special offer. So let's start first with the why of why the first year is so fake. So why do avoidant people present a false image in that first year of a relationship? I'll be honest with you. It's not because they're trying to lie to you. Most avoidantly attached people are actually very honest. It's actually that they don't know how to engage with you in any other way that's more honest than the false front that they're presenting. Let's talk about novelty dopamine. Novelty dopamine is that experience you have when you're around a new partner, having new experiences, looking at new body parts, doing new activities, and having a fun new experience. Novelty dopamine tends to last the first five months. After five months, it begins to fall off. I call this the dopamine cliff. It can go away at four months, five months, six months, but definitely by seven months, you're gone. Okay. Some couples can extend that dopamine a little bit with fun activities, getting someone else involved, toys, lingerie. We have a whole theme park of delights for people desperately trying to bring back the novelty dopamine in their relationship. But dopamine isn't the answer. It's a lack of something called oxytocin bonding that is supposed to be happening. Most most avoidantly attached people are not properly oxytocin bonded. In fact, that's one of the defining features of avoidant attachment style. For anyone who's watched the number of avoidantly attached videos here on this channel, you'll understand what I mean when I say their oxytocin receptors are being blocked by cortisol and their oxytocin receptors in many cases have shifted to accept vasopressin instead. So even if they do get a little bit of oxytocin, they're getting a dwindling amount, a small amount compared to what they could be getting. And they avoid the activities that are going to release dopamine or at least oxytocin anyway. They're really dependent on dopamine. Their cortisol goes up because they have low GABA because of the low oxytocin. So they're not resilient at all. They get cortisol at the drop of a hat and then they have to flood with dopamine to try to bring that back down, which is why they're dependent on the dopamine. They also think that other people feel the same way they do. So they don't understand that other people are getting oxytocin bonding. They think relationships are an exchange of dopamine. So for the first seven months, you're trying to give each other dopamine and hoping to extend the dopamine and hoping to have a fun time temporarily until it falls apart. This is why most avoidant people are fairly fake in that first year. Again, not because they're lying, but because it's a game of giving each other dopamine until you can't anymore. At one year, your dopamine novelty is gone. It's very hard to even extend it beyond one year. Oxytocin should have taken over well in advance and your bonding should be going up through the roof. This is why most people are aiming for moving in together, getting married, getting engaged, having children, doing deeper commitment level things at one year, but avoidant people don't. And they don't understand why other people are doing that because they're less happy than ever. Okay. This is why most couples end up breaking up at one year. This is that huge, gigantic one-year wall of I'm having diminished returns. My life is not happy. I am not happy. Nobody's happy. You're demanding more and more from me. I don't get it. This is why avoidantly attached people at one year say, how could you want to stay in this and get married? I've never been more miserable. That's the one-year wall. But for the couples who make it past that wall, 
They do four key things differently in their first year together that helps that avoidant person bond properly. Now, these changes are so significant that when avoidant coaching clients come to me seeking help to overcome their attachment issues, they cite this relationship dynamic, these four things as the one key piece that has made them finally question their old patterns. And they say these four approaches are how they knew their partner was the love of their life that they could not lose. So here are the four approaches, the four key things you must do differently in your first year together if you want to keep your avoidant partner with you. And hi, avoidant people. I know you're here watching this too. These are the four key things you need to be setting up and making sure that your partner is capable of so that you can both move forward into a bonded relationship. Okay. Let's go into step number one. First thing you have to do is establish clear trust. Now, trust is a slow burn, okay? Especially with avoidant people. Avoidant people are wary of getting hurt. They build trust gradually. They take time to feel safe enough to be vulnerable and to open up emotionally. All those are words, by the way, that make them throw up. They wouldn't describe it as, I need to feel safe to become vulnerable and open up emotionally. They would probably rather have their fingernails ripped off. But... That's ultimately what's happening. We need to create a place where they feel that it makes sense that they're not going to get blindsided by somebody because the person's trustworthy, then the person can open up and show who they are, and then they can open up and bond properly with the other individual and give them trust. There needs to be a clear framework. One year fully allows a person to observe your consistency, reliability, and your ability to accept others before risking that intimacy. Okay. Most avoidant people here on this channel. Hi guys. The most of you came in, you've been watching me secretly and silently lurking in the shadows. Totally cool for about six months. It takes six months for most avoidant people to hear about me, watch me, and then decide to leave a comment. DM me on one of my platforms, send me an email, even just acknowledge that they're watching because for that first six months, they're wondering how I'm going to backtrack, how I'm going to rob them, how I'm going to jump through the screen and start stealing money out of their wallet. They're trying to figure out what it is that's making me different. And if I'm just a sham and I get that and I understand that. So by all means, keep circling. You're totally cool. I'm not going to grab you. Don't worry. But this is this is the process, you guys. It, it takes consistency, reliability, acceptance of others, reason, logic, speaking a person's language, okay? There's four levels of trust, and I teach this inside my coaching practice, but really quick, what you need to know is, number one, a person must be consistent and they have to be self-policing with a clear code of conduct that they make explicit to the other person. Okay. The avoidant person has to see that there's a code of conduct happening. They know what it is. That person not only is consistent with it during times of stress, but then self-polices themselves if they ever deviate from it. Okay. Absolutely mandatory. Number two, goals. You have to have a clear, specific goal that the avoidant person knows and can respect that you continue to show focus on during times of stress. And if you ever deviate from it, you self-correct yourself back to it. These two things make you worthy of trust because they don't have to watch you like a hawk and then believe that you're going to shank them in the ribs the first moment you get. They know that you're going to de not deviate too much. You're going to go back to your goals and your values and they don't have to be the one keeping you self-policed and in line. Okay. Very important. Number three, acceptance. Can you accept the avoidant person and their needs and their challenges and whatever they have and also not overwhelm them, demand them, judge them? A lot of avoidant people are actually afraid of rejection and they get hurt by it quite a bit. It's disappointing. It's hurtful and it's scary. Can you accept them without rejection, without rejecting them while well, still holding them accountable? And can you take full ownership of your own problems, the things you're doing? If you can do that, you're reliable at level three. And that opens the possibility of level four mutually fulfilling. Yes. Will you make it clear to them what you're looking for in a relationship? But will you also listen to them about what's clear and what they need in a relationship and then do it? That's level four. These are the four levels of trust. You have to establish all of this as quickly as possible and then maintain it and keep looking at it through that entire year. If you can do that with an avoidant person, by the end of that year, that avoidant person will be eating out of the palm of your hand, so to speak. They go from scared cat to loving, connected companion because they have you have earned and established and proven their trust in you over and over and over. And that's something they don't, they don't find in this world. So... 
build that trust, absolutely mandatory, must be in the first year as quickly as possible within the first month if you can, and then allow them to circle you and watch you for 11 months. At one year, they know who you are and you've built that solid trust. That's where oxytocin bonding and everything comes in because their stress level is low enough to finally trust you. Okay. Number two, Second thing you have to do is test the waters. The initial stages of a relationship might feel like a test for avoidant people. They might unconsciously push boundaries with you, create distance or withdraw to gauge reaction. If you remain patient and supportive while still calling them out, having conversations and being reasonable, if they have a need, they pull away. If they get worried, they pull away. If you go through stress, you manage it properly. This is a massive testing period. The first year should be. Avoidant people actually get this right. The first year is a massive testing ground to see who's going to break. They get this very right. So understand that the first year is a testing ground. I understand that the first six months is a testing ground for avoiding people. And then the first contact they have with me. And then the next couple of emails. This is why they email me at six months and then they go away for a month to see if I'm going to chase them. And I don't. So they email me again. Then we have a few emails. Then they go away. Then they come back. Then we have a couple more emails. Then they sign up for my coaching or they sign up for my mentorship group. Maybe they buy a course. Maybe they buy a book, whatever it might be. And they see how I react and they see what I'm going to do. And then they come into the first call with me. And they're nervous that I'm going to grab them there and somehow some ruin their life at that moment. And then as we start to build a relationship, they ease into it. Understand that everything is a testing phase with them. You have p tests to pass. And it's not, are you a good person? It's, are you worthy of trust? Go back to that first trusting method, but the whole first year is a testing ground. Understand that and test them too. Challenge them smartly, logically, calmly, and reasonably. Challenge them on the things that they do. Ask them questions about it. Very, very important. The, the third thing you have to do is address their fear of engulfment. Okay? Avoidant people cherish their independence. <laughs> Shock, I know. They, they're afraid of losing themselves in a relationship. They're afraid of being swallowed alive. They're afraid of being enslaved into the relationship. Okay? Many of them had parents growing up, maybe an anxious mom, who forced them to soothe her needs. For them to stay safe, they had to soothe mom so mom wouldn't fly off the handle and do something stupid. That was what their brain said. So a lot of them grew up soothing mom. Understand that they don't want to be engulfed by your needs. They want to connect, but they're afraid of being shackled. They're afraid that if they come in close to you, you're going to grab them, slap a collar on them, chain them to the wall and say, this is where you live now. Now, after a year they might feel more comfortable expressing their individuality, their interests, knowing that you value their sense of self. If you spend that first year building those boundaries and saying, look, how much time apart do you need? How much time on your own do you need? Okay, let's build that in. Let's build that into our weekly schedule where you are guaranteed time to yourself. Okay, important to have this. And then what do you expect from each other, really? Because avoiding people will overgive, thinking that they have to maintain your mood for you all the time. Again, that's how they police other people and make other people be good, sane, reasonable. Other people are not self-policing with their values and their goals, right? So they make other people act better by decreasing other people's stress, but then it's exhausting. Talk about what you expect and talk about what you don't expect. Help them understand they will not be engulfed by your emotions. This is mandatory. Okay, no one wants to be engulfed by emotions. Maybe massively codependent, anxiously attached people, but then only for a short time. Even they burn out on it. So, understood. Avoidant people cherish that independence. Okay? After that year of building this and helping them structure it, and then, frankly, they should be asking you and being clear about it. It's important. You can foster that independence and that security for them after that one year. This, again, will help them bond with oxytocin, vasopressin, GABA, serotonin. They're going to say, I've never felt this way before. I didn't even know a human could feel this way. I didn't even know I could have a connection with somebody like this. They're going to be blown away by what you're offering them. The fourth thing you have to do is build a secure attachment base in your relationship. Over time, a secure and consistent relationship dynamic can begin to rewire the avoidant person's attachment style, their brain chemistry, their hormones. Everything changes through their entire brain and body. It's incredible the transformation that happens when an avoidant person is actually linked up with a securely attached person. They might start and will usually start to feel much more comfortable depending on you expressing your true self 
and allowing them to express their true self in the relationship and to be received. Remember, avoidantly attached people are afraid of rejection, not because they think they're inherently unlovable, but they think other people are incapable of accepting. Foster secure attachment with all the things we've talked about here so far by having clear conversations with them and saying, hey, I've observed this. You, you seem to be doing this. Tell me about that. Let's talk about that. Is that a problem that needs to be fixed? Do you need something? How can we fix this together? Don't be a doormat to them. This is not at all what I would ever encourage anybody. Do not be a doormat. Build real mutual fulfillment. Avoidant people usually respond with shock and pleased, pleased, pleased surprise. And then love. And then real love. And then devotion and loyalty. Because they've never felt this before. And they're grateful. Most people get this very wrong. They think that avoidant people are ungrateful and selfish and entitled. And in fact, avoidant people have never really felt bonded or like anyone has really cared for them. When they actually feel it, they become some of the most devoted, loving, fulfilling, caring people on the planet. Okay, They will guard you against threats and risks. They will defend you with their life. But first, you have to help them feel bonded or they feel like they have nothing in this relationship. Now, to be clear, some avoidant people might program with this really, really quick because they've been looking for it. They've been hoping for it. Maybe they've had a little bit of a taste of it and they're ready to make a move forward. Maybe they're just a little bit of avoidant. Other avoidant people are going to take a little bit longer. Okay. They might surprise you early or they might hold out on that vulnerability for quite some time. Really a huge piece of that though is do you help them feel secure? If you help if you help them feel exceptionally secure, they usually pop open like that. So if you need some help, you generating these effective results, okay? I do have a course that could be helpful. I have something called How to Love an Avoidant Man. It's a video course designed to walk you through all the things we talked about here in this video in depth. You can watch it yourself and apply it. You can watch it together and work on it together. It also teaches you their specific risk-focused language that's going to be most helpful in understanding exactly what they're saying to you and help you them understand what you're trying to say to them. Now, the first year of a relationship, you guys, is crucial to set up the rest of your life together. If your partner is putting up a false front, not as a manipulation tactic, but because they don't know how else to connect with you, the first year will lead only to heartbreak. But if you can set up that first year properly and form an authentic connection with them, you can build a bond that lasts a lifetime. So make sure that you're fostering the right trust and intimacy with them, the sort that they've never known before with anybody. So they understand you are the right one for them and you don't lose this wonderful shot at real happiness together. And please remember that How to Love an Avoidant Man video course that's available, it gives you the proven roadmap to foster that relationship together. In fact, if you use offer YouTube25, that code, that will give you 25% off the course. You can click the link down below in the show notes, YouTube25, it'll give you 25% off the ticket price. That's my special offer to you to help you protect your relationship. I'm Adam Lane Smith, the attachment specialist. It has been an honor working with you here today. Thank you for giving me your time. And one major problem that I have seen with avoidant partners and their loved ones is that few people can ever explain what emotional intimacy even is or why it's important. So I built a video to help you do that. I recommend you check out one of my most popular videos of all time on this channel called What is Emotional Intimacy? It can help you answer that question to your partner and help you articulate together what you're going to create. I'll see you in that video.